grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus says things that are hard for his disciples to hear. He tells them, I have way more to tell you than you can possibly understand now. I'm not even going to talk to you about this yet. It's just going to have to wait until you're a little bit older. Maybe you've heard that from mom and dad before. Eh, you're not going to understand this yet, but you will when you're a little bit older. So Jesus says, it's good that I go back to my father. He's already finished the work of dying and rising for our salvation, and now he's going back, ascending to the right hand of the Father, as we confess in the Creed. And he says, I know this is going to upset you. You're going to be sad again to see me go, but it's good that I go, because if I didn't go, then the Holy Spirit wouldn't come, but if I do go, I'll make sure that the Holy Spirit comes. And that's the Sunday we'll have in the near future called Pentecost Sunday where the Spirit descends, not in the form of a dove like he did over Jesus' baptism, but with tongues of fire and things like that. But we'll hold off until a little bit later, like Jesus says. There's a lot more to talk about. We can't get it all in in one, one sermon. Jesus says it's good that the Holy Spirit comes. And our memory verse this week is that he will guide you into all the truth. Yay. Looking forward to that, aren't we? Learning more. Going deeper into the wonderful mysteries of God's kingdom. Don't stop, Jesus. Don't stop, Spirit. Keep leading and guiding us into more and more and more of what this is all about. I mean, it's why on Sundays we come to church and then we don't want it to stop, right? We say, oh, pastor, please don't say amen. You've only been preaching for 20 minutes. Let's make it longer, please. Do we talk like that? No, no we don't talk like that. Or like this. Hey, the, the, the service is over. It's time for Sunday school and Bible class, I hope. The pastor just keeps teaching me more and more about God's truth. Do we talk like that? Maybe we grab a donut and a cup of coffee and an orange juice and head out the door. Maybe that's more the way it is. Time to get on to other things. But Jesus is talking differently. He's saying, wait a second, this is wonderful that I'm going to make sure that you keep getting guided by the Spirit into more and more of my truth. Hmm, that is good news. But maybe our ears would perk up a little bit more with respect to something else that Jesus also says. Did you pay attention to this? He says that the Spirit will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears from Jesus, that's what he will declare to you. And he says, he will declare to you the things that are to come. I wonder if Bible class was where the Spirit tells us what's going to happen with the stock market and which stocks are going to go through the roof. So if you buy them, you'll get rich. That's what, the, that's what the Spirit is going to declare today in Bible class. How many people do you think would stay for Bible class then? If you stay for Bible class today, the Holy Spirit will make sure that you are rich. Would a lot of people stay then, Dawson? Yeah. Yeah, sure. He's going to tell us all the things that are to come and what not to invest in and where to put our money so that it grows. And by the way, tell us if there are going to be germs around so we can avoid them or if there are going to be bad things that are going to trip us up or get us hurt. You tell us and we'll avoid those things and make sure my life is easy peasy, just the way I like it. Now, if that's what Jesus means by the Spirit telling us, declaring to us all the things that are to come, I bet you we'd get a lot of people staying, wouldn't we? Doesn't that make sense? 
except that's really not what he's talking about. He's talking about uh, the apostles writing the, the letters, and especially John, who is going to write the revelation at the end of the Bible and things like that. The most important thing that the Spirit does for us is tell us that Jesus is coming again. That for now we may have a little sorrow. That's just a little while. And he'll remind us that Jesus called it a little while. A micron. But in a little while, Jesus will come again. And then no one will ever take our joy from us. No one can take the joy away from us that is ours right now. Christ is risen. No matter what the stock market does, no matter what some guy in North Korea does, no matter what anything, ha whatever happens, no matter what, nobody can take that away from you. Christ has died, but Christ has risen, and Christ ascended to the right hand of the Father, has sent his spirit. And that spirit has descended on you, not in the form of a dove, but at your baptism, just as he descended over Jesus at his baptism, and he's working through the word that's preached and that's taught to tell you all things that are to come. They're all included in this. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. That's all you really need to know. And until then, he is with you. I am with you. Lo, I am with you. Always even to the end of the ages. And he is in his church with his body and his blood. Really? Why are these so important? These are so important because of the last thing Jesus says. Jesus says, all that the Father has is mine. We'll hear more about that this coming Wednesday, tomorrow night, and then Sunday too. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that the Spirit will take what is mine and he will declare it to you. You know what? That's the wonderful thing. Whatever Jesus has, it's the Spirit's job to make sure you get it too. Jesus died, Jesus rose. The Spirit makes sure you get that too in baptism. If Jesus died and Jesus rose, then you died and you rose and you will rise again. That's what the Spirit makes sure you get in baptism. It's Christ's and the Spirit makes sure that it's yours too. Jesus has a Father that speaks well of him from above. This is my Son whom I love. With this one I am well pleased. The Spirit makes sure that you get that kind of speaking from your Father in heaven too. Because Jesus says that's the Spirit's work to take whatever I have and make sure you get it also. And so at the table of the Lord, wow, Jesus' body, Jesus' blood, yes, the Spirit makes sure you get that also. As you come and eat and drink at Jesus' table, the Spirit and the Father and the Son are all working together to make sure that you get what they've got. You know, you learn early on from mom and dad and teachers that it's important to share and not be selfish. Have you ever heard that? You're supposed to share? No. You've never heard that? You're supposed to share and be nice and not keep everything to yourself. You don't want to go through life going, mine, mine. That's kind of selfish, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's not the way God goes through life. The father said, my son is going to be your savior. So I'm going to give him. God loved the world like this. He gave his only begotten son. And now Jesus says, but my father isn't just going to be my father. You know, sometimes kids will walk around and say, my daddy can beat up your daddy. I don't know if kids say that anymore. Has anybody ever heard that? Yeah. My daddy's smarter than your daddy. You know, my daddy's richer than your daddy. Yeah. Jesus goes, my father has everything. But my father is now your father, too, because I share. That's why I came, why I died, why I rose, why I ascended into heaven to give out wonderful gifts like baptism, preaching and teaching, oh, my body and my blood, my dying and rising for the forgiveness of your sins, my life and salvation, my father's house. That's all yours. That's what Jesus says. And that's why Jesus gives the Holy Spirit so that you believe it's true, so that you learn it. And 
learn to see the wonderful joy in it. It's better than if the spirit showed up in Bible class and said, today's lesson is how to get rich and stay that way. Oh, this is even better. It's how to be sure that you have a father in heaven who loves you and forgives you, who has given you his son, who has given you their spirit. How to be sure that you are loved and taken care of no matter what until the day he comes again in glory to take you to be with him forever in heaven. And all we can say to that is, Amen, Amen, Yes, Yes, it shall be so. In Jesus' name, Amen.